So I'm going to start the recording. Hello again, everyone. Uh, although most of you already know about Bob well, I'd like to quickly introduce him for those who haven't had the chance to meet him before. So Bob is an English language instructor who holds a BA at the University of California, Irwin, in the field of information and computer science, and he has an MA degree in teaching English to speakers of other languages at University of, uh, at California State University, Sacramento. And he has been teaching English since 2007, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and in different countries like Japan, Ethiopia, United States, and Turkey. And beginning from the start of the last academic year, uh, we have been with him uh, and he is teaching here as an English language fellow. And uh, he is a native speaker of English and it has been a great opportunity to have him as a teacher here uh, for both us and for our students, of course. It was a great opportunity, so thank you so much again. And today he has been so kind to share his knowledge about uh, one of the educational technological tools, Miro. And I'm really looking forward to uh, what you're going to share with us. So I'll leave the stage to you. Thank you in advance. All right. Thank you very much, Amel, for the kind introduction. Uh, yeah, my name is Bob. Uh, I've been teaching here for a year and online only. So that's my specialty. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this, you can write it in the chat. You can raise your hand. Um, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So keep your Microsoft Teams on, but your screen is mainly going to be with me on Miro, which I'm going to share with you right now. Uh, it's going to take a little bit to load because it's just there's a lot of information on there. Uh, I'm going to share this in the chat right now. And if I speak too fast, if I said something you don't understand, just give me a a laughing face, that's my favorite. <laughs> There's like no sad face. I wish there was like a confused or sad face in Microsoft Teams. I don't know why. See, there we go. Jet's confused now. All right, uh, so I'm gonna share my screen um, just because I'm gonna share my screen, but you can mainly be in Miro if you have the app. Uh, if you have it on your computer, uh, if you just have it as a browser, it also works pretty much the same way. If you're on your smartphone devices, then I would recommend having um, it open on both. So you can be able to hear me using Microsoft Teams and you'll still be able to interact. And I see a lot of people floating around, which is awesome. Uh, I'm going to do this thing where everyone comes to me. So there you go. Uh, so we're talking about Miro today, and it's hard to explain what Miro is, but I discovered Miro like two, during the pandemic. Uh, I was always looking for a way to kind of organize my brain, to like store information, to graphically organize information that I collected, to stop having like a hundred tabs open on my browser. You guys are stuck with me, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, and practice right now zooming in, zooming out. Uh, you can use your little mouse scroll wheel. It's pretty intuitive. There's a way you can hold down Shift or Alt or something. It's different on a Mac. It's different on a Windows device. But I see you guys are floating around. And this is what I love about this when I'm interacting with students, is that they're just like flying around like busy bees. All right. So today's the 20, 20th of June. You're going to follow me over here. Uh, if you haven't signed up for Miro yet, you can do that now. Uh, didn't get the assignment. You can click a link to the Apple device or Android. Um, I don't know why this video won't play the audio for me. But Miro is cool. It lets you play. Videos. Hello, everyone. This is Bob. And oh, it works. Yes. OK. Uh, so yeah, Miro lets you embed videos. So this is a Loom video. It's another tool that I uh, sent a video out about. This it's a screen recording tool that automatically uploads to the cloud so you don't have to send any big files. You just send a link to your students. And now they've added transcription, which is amazing. It's a free service, and uh, it'll give you all the subtitles and everything. All right. So I'm going to press my present button. You're going to follow me around, I think. We did that. All right. We're going to do a little warm-up. Um, just a little, you know, icebreaker. What I want you to do is add a photo 
the first photo that's on your phone, if you know how to do that, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. You can just drag in a picture. You can copy and paste um, over here. There's a way to upload. You have to click on those little arrows. This is the left sidebar. Before I get into any details, I just want you to quickly do this. Uh, and then you can grab one of these. Oh, there's my hamburger. There's my hamburger. Uh, and I'm going to put a... Whoops. I have to bring that forward, guys. Let's delete these. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. I'm going to bring this forward. I'm going to write my name. And I'm going to write what this is about. So this is uh, last night I ate at Johannes Burger. Delicious. No mayonnaise. Uh, and my favorite uh, online tool, EdTech tool, is Miro. I love Miro. So you can see what everybody's doing. You can add your own little sticky note. You just can press N and click anywhere. That's probably the easiest thing to do instead of dragging these guys around. I see people are grabbing my stuff. <laughs> Please bring it back. This is the beauty of Miro. Somebody can grab everything. I don't even know how to unlock this. Oh, that's what you did. I see. Wonderful. Whoops. There we go. And yeah, as you notice, I've hidden some of these frames. Uh, if I click on them, uh, I can. I can't do anything. Oh, I have to do it there. We won't use present mode. Oh, so what is Miro? Uh, that's what we're going to talk about right now. We're going to talk about some use cases for teachers specifically, uh, not necessarily in the classroom. We're going to talk about interactions in the classroom uh, using Miro, ways you can use it for assessments, um, for sharing information. And we're going to finish uh, with a little activity. We're going to try to see if this works. I've never done anything like this before. So you're all my guinea pigs. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's go down and see what Miro is all about. What is Miro? I've hidden all these. I can't cheat. What is Miro? Uh, I can't answer that question. <laughs> there's, there's like too much of what Miro is to me. But it's one of my favorite tools. Uh, so I put together just this little mock-up of a Miro. Uh, if you look in the left side, you can see kind of the name. Uh, you can change where these are located. If you sign up, get an educator's account, you have up to like a thousand teams that you can like send out to. And you can figure that out on your own. Um, on the top left, top right, uh, you'll see where you can share things and you can change from edit to view, comment. Uh, I'm letting everybody edit in this, uh, so you, when you do that, you kind of have to protect the spaces. I'll show you how to do that. Um, you can present uh, if you add frames. Uh, that's a way that you can move uh, the Miro around. I can show you again how I've been moving around. So it kind of looks like a Prezi when you do this. Uh, you can make it go to any space that you want. Uh, I'm not going to be able to show you all of those details. Um, and also on the left side, you'll see this left bar. You can add a template. Um, you can start with the template if you want to start with the mind map. Uh, there's tons of different ones. I usually just like starting with a blank. Um, but if you want to do kind of these, you know, uh, KWL charts, it's there. Uh, you can add in KWL. Uh, and you'll be able to add that in. Students will be able to interact by adding sticky notes as well. That's one of the coolest features, I think. They keep adding new templates. Uh, also, if you kind of just hover over each tool on the left, you'll see that sometimes there is a shortcut. And if I press N now, uh, I'll be able to just click and quickly add in a note. This is a sticky note. Uh, anytime you have this, you can change any of the colors, the background things, if you want to make it black. Um, 
change the fonts, all of that. You can add shapes. Uh, shapes come in many shapes and sizes. Uh, and you can change colors. You can type within the box. Hello. And I think one of the coolest things is these lines. So you can see these little blue lines, and you can add and connect things in a very smart and organized way. So if you're trying to show students graphical information, uh, this could be a really cool way to do that. Uh, you can press L at any time to just add a line. You can change the type of line you're using. Sometimes I like to use these super bold lines. Um, you can draw. Uh, so you can use this as a whiteboard. So Bob was here. Uh, and if you have another device, you can actually use both devices at the same time. So I have Miro on my iPad, uh, and I have it on my computer at the moment. So it really does help. Uh, I like this thing. You can do like square, oh, whoops. It'll like convert your shapes into like, no. How do you do a uh, triangle? Oh, I didn't. Star. It's not working today. <laughs> you can use highlighters, all that fun stuff. Uh, comments and frames. So frames, you can add an extra little space around. That's how you move these things around. I'm going to remove that. And tables and a bunch of other things. So there's this thing called the icon finder. Uh, if I wanted to add an icon of a house, uh, it would just get added there. Uh, there's tons of different apps that you can add. You can move any of these around if you want to. If you use something frequently, you can move things around and explore that. Uh, there's lots of cool tools. Uh, the best thing I like about this is how fast you can get if you start learning all these cool little shortcuts. Um, and the last thing would be these frames. Uh, you can see any comments that were made, uh, and you can see the history, so what people did. If you're working on a, something collaboratively, you can see who added what. That's all up to you. So go ahead, play around, add some things, make some ugly mistakes, uh, learn from those. Um, you can't really go wrong. If you need to undo anything, uh, there is an undo, a redo button. Somebody messes something up. And oh, one of the most important things if you're using this collaboratively with students is this lock button. And that'll lock it in place. Uh, anybody can unlock it unless you click on that shield. And then once that happens, only I can unlock it. So now nobody can drag my things around. And I've had to lock this um, because whenever students are grabbing things, they just pick up the entire board. <laughs> Uh, so that's one way you could do it. If you're just presenting, you, you don't need to lock anything. If you're just using it as your presentation slides, that's one way to do it. Uh, but any of these guys, I, any of these that I made, oh, I can move everybody. There we go. That's mine. So yeah, tons of little tools. Uh, you know, you can use this as a whiteboard in the class. I'm going to try to draw. Let's see if this works. There's a star. You can add all sorts of things. You can, uh, what is it, Unsplash. You can add any pictures, images from Unsplash, uh, all open source pictures, images that you can add. You can drag in pictures that you have on your computer. Boom, all that stuff. And that's Miro. Any questions about this before we move on to use cases? No questions. All right. So you're going to move along with me. I'm going to frame it around. See where we are. Come with me. All right. Before we begin, we're going to talk about this thing called bandwidth immediacy matrix. Sounds fancy. It's a matrix. It's four by, it's two by two. Um, on the top is anything high bandwidth that requires lots of internet, low bandwidth you know, emails, things like that. Uh, immediacy is just kind of, if it's asynchronous, how quickly messages are supposed to be received versus high immediacy, which is instant communication, synchronous, right? 
So I always want you to think about this when you incorporate、uh, online activities in your classroom. Do your students have enough bandwidth?、Uh, is there a way that you can still have immediacy without the bandwidth? Things like group chats and messages,、uh, collaborative documents using Google Docs, right?、Uh, in the low immediacy, low bandwidth, still very important emails,、uh, these chats that we don't have to respond to immediately.、Uh, anything with the discussion board that you can send to students, that kind of any assignments that you send to students, they can do it on their own time. It doesn't require、uh, you know, the bandwidth to stay, to enjoy the process. Um, high bandwidth, low immediacy, sending videos to students using like Loom as a screen recording tool, any pre recorded audios,、uh, sending them links to class. I mean, even them watching the Microsoft Team classes is a version of the yellow box.、Um, so think about these colors because I use this color coding、uh, as I continue to talk about use cases for Miro. Take a screenshot if you want. Uh, do whatever you want to do. I'll send this Miro. You have this link, anyways. So we'll all be able to come back to this Miro. I want to see. Somebody drew something. Nice. <laughs> YouTube links.、Uh, one of the really cool things about YouTube links, let me try to do this if I can, is if you don't make a paste sticky note and you just paste it, Control V,、uh, that YouTube video, oh boy. B O B, that's me.、Uh, airplanes, you can actually play it inside the song. I was listening to that song before the session started, so、yeah. I just gave it a try and. <laughs> Ads, sorry. We'll start. So you can actually watch the video. So you can share YouTube videos to students. They can watch it within the mirror. That's something that I like doing when I'm sharing resources. Uh, let's go to the possibilities. All right, follow me, everybody. What is Miro? I don't know. <laughs> it's a whiteboard, it's a brainstorming tool. Some people call that ideation,、uh, resource sharing, page layout. If you just want to make something、uh, that you can make a screenshot of, you can export as PDF.、Uh, you can quickly put together maybe like a flyer for something. Uh, team collaboration. If you want to work together、uh, on a project and brainstorm, boom.、Uh, presentation tool.、Um, that's what I'm doing right now with it.、Uh, one day, hopefully, it gets audio, so you can just listen within this app. You don't even have to use Microsoft Teams. Everybody knows how much I hate Microsoft Teams.、Uh, participation activities for class and. So much more.、Uh, there's links that you can add. Like I said, you can watch videos within it.、Uh, and if you ever add a PDF, so design councils,、um, this design group, non, non, it's a government group in the UK,、uh, and they've been using Miro for all sorts of things.、Uh, I'll send you guys a link. They run their meetings using Miro. It's quite fascinating what they've done.、Um, but yeah, you can embed. Uh, PDFs so people can read them. You can have your students reading, watching videos.、Uh, this could be a way that you can give instructions and so on. All right. Let's talk about use cases.、Uh, anybody have any questions? Am I going too fast? Are you like, what is Bob talking about today? No, not yet. All right. Use cases how can teachers use it outside of the classroom? Uh, and I think this is. Oops, somebody moved it. I gotta figure out. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. All right. Use cases. Let's look at this one. I gotta lock the frames. All right. Use cases for teachers.、Uh, brainstorming. This is, I think, the most important thing for me、uh, when I started using this was just. I was going on YouTube. I was down. I, you know, doing research on what classes and how to teach grammar. And I had like, I just like thirty browsers op- or tabs open on my browser.、Um, and you can't really figure out what these tabs are. There, you know, there's no information in them.、Uh, 
Uh, so what I ended up doing, I'm going to share this with you. Open it first, then I'll share it with you. Click on that link, go to this brainstorm. Uh, this is, I was doing some research on code switching. Uh, I'm going to share this link, so open it up. I can also share it in the chat. Hold on. There is a chat somewhere here. There it is. So you can click on that link, fly to this other one. I'll put it in the Microsoft Teams as well. Um, yeah, this just kind of started off as me doing some research on what code switching is. Um, I'm going to have you guys follow me if you... Nope, nobody's here yet. If you look... You might have to switch to Microsoft Teams if you don't want to jump in here, see the screen. But I just put together these videos that I thought represented code switching um, and what code switching is. We all code switch, but some examples are more effective than others. Okay, let's be real honest. Obama would not be president if he didn't know how to effectively code switch. Obama out. Uh, and yeah, so there's this whole list of different uh, videos that talk about code switching in real life, in movies as well. Um, and then I ended up using this brainstorm as a way that I was teaching. So uh, if we jump back, uh, I ended up making this code switching brainstorm into part of a lesson for a speaking class for English language teaching department at Chikorova University. And yeah, I, I shared this. Uh, students could watch the videos. They could get an idea, a sense during the class. Uh, and then we talked about what it means to code switch, uh, why people have to code switch, things like that. Um, but yeah, just different ideas, talking about discrimination as well, because they're kind of interconnected sometimes. Not always. Um, yeah, all right, go back to the IDU PDU Miro training. Um, and I'm going to share some other resources. Uh, if you're going to do any kind of ed tech, I did this for another project that I was working on. I'll share this also in the link. Just let you guys float around, see. I think seeing and doing or how we learn best, so. Oh, I put it in the wrong chat. Oh, I, oh yeah. Check out this. Uh, it's an ed tech resource uh, where I just kind of put together some information, shared it with a group of, I don't know, 100 teachers, uh, different educators that you can follow. Um, ed tech media, tutorials, things like that, uh, websites and resources. Uh, and then I gave them a form that they could fill out if they wanted to. What's it called? Give me some more information. I haven't updated this in a while, but it's a living, breathing document. It's something I can share now from now on. Um, and yeah, let's see what else I got here. Uh, songs. If you guys didn't see the list of songs, so I'm trying to put together a bunch of YouTube videos uh, with lyrics of songs. Somebody's given me comments. Thanks, Amel. Uh, where students can, you can share this with your student. You can use this as a teacher, right? Find songs that are related to different topics. Let's just take a couple minutes. You can look around. Uh, something else I also did last week during the uh, Andy Hockley uh, meeting was I took notes using uh, Miro, and I'll share that with you. So you can just click around, see any links, see the possibilities. I'm not going to discuss. If you have any questions about anything, we can talk about it. But I just want to give you some time to float around, uh, see what this stuff is all about. And you can easily switch between mirrors. Um, yeah. The song list, this is what I've been trying to work on uh, as a teacher here, using songs in the classroom, uh, focusing on different grammar points. Some of them are just feel-good songs. Uh, but, you know, listening to music, asking students, asking other teachers, 
and being able to kind of put together a, a little database, and I want more, obviously, uh, where students can listen. Let's listen to something. Of course, the Beatles. And you can just click on the link, play it in your... I will. Present perfect. <laughs> Awesome. Um, love that song. Yep, conditional statements, uh, as long as you love me. Oh, oh, Bieber. Stuff like that. So to look around, uh, this Andy Hockley feedback. I think Edda was watching me making this. Um, but I was just taking notes and adding links. Um, and I ended up adding more information just to kind of do my own research, what a Johari window is blah, 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 uh, what the BOF system is. There's a YouTube video I found, so. You know, and, and the cool thing about taking notes on digital was. Hi, welcome to another bite sized learning video. He talks about BOF in this, uh, stop serving the feedback sandwich, so some research about that. Uh, and then I love this Adam Grant. There's a podcast episode that I was thinking about while I was uh, in that meeting. And it's basically about how to love criticism. Uh, there's an organization where they are allowed to just give really harsh criticism to each other. So saying things like, you are the worst manager in this organization. <laughs> um, and this culture of receiving feedback. No, nobody said that. Good job. You're making assumptions. First thing while giving feedback is to not make assumptions. Okay, about... <laughs> All right, so take a moment, flip around, look at things, lots of ed tech, uh, code switching, songs to learn English. Uh, those are kind of different ways that we can use brainstorming, collecting information, and then eventually sharing it. Because, I mean, I could share those Andy Hockley notes with people. Um, and you can turn those brainstorms into lesson plans, right? Uh, you can start adding in images from uh, the textbook. Yes, Kajet, question. Hand raise. Bob, did you do it while you were listening to Andy? Yes. Or did you work after the presentation as well? I did it while I, I was this. listening to Andy Hockler. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> but I, I added the videos, these videos and the PDFs later. But I didn't mm -hmm, know what a Johari mm -hmm. window was, so I just found this link. It opened up mm -hmm. on my computer and I said, hey, cool. So one of the cool things mm -hmm. about uh, Miro is, yeah, anytime you add a link, uh, it gives you information about that link. It's not just this empty, uh, you know, HTML, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's like information. It has, uh, yeah. So yeah, I did do this during it. I don't know. I'd like to take notes. <laughs> Helps me focus. Otherwise, I would just be... I don't know, doing something else. Yeah, any other questions? No, all right. Uh, obviously, yeah, you can do something like collaboration, uh, create a Miro, share it with everybody, have them start adding uh, videos or links about a topic that you want to focus on. And as a teacher, you can do trainings, and that's what I'm doing right now. Trainings, presentations. Uh, you can use the boards that you create, you know, once you get better at them, once you are able to kind of start to see things visually, uh, I think you can turn anything you do. I just think anything you make, you should be able to present it at some point. Um, and the cool thing about Miro uh, is I've never lost any of this information. It's on my computer. Whatever I make, I can come back to it. Um, you know, if you're looking at the other screen, things about like, COVID ads that I was using for a class. Um, I don't know, tons of stuff. All right, so those are use cases for teachers outside the classroom. Let's go to inside the classroom. I don't know why I made these things. I feel like a teacher. Uh, use cases in the classroom. Um, and this is kind of like, I think once you practice, once you get better at making things outside the classroom, 
you can start to bring them into the classroom. Um, presentations during class, right? So instead of using PowerPoint or instead of having nothing, uh, just kind of using Miro or something like this as a whiteboard to get ideas started. Um, yeah, it's gonna all follow me here. Use Miro instead of a PowerPoint. You can kind of learn how to design uh, moving presentations the way that I've been doing. Uh, and students can also use Miro to present as well. If you start them early, get them like doing graphic organizers, things like that. I, Originally, I used Miro as a tool for students uh, to create graphic organizing organizers, what would I call it, visual notes, instead of actually taking word notes. And I'll show you some examples. Uh, you can use this for instruction, right? So you set up, uh, I used to put the textbook, I would just copy and paste the textbook into my Miro uh, and then just kind of teach from that. Using the pen, I could draw on things uh, it was just a lot more interactive than what the textbook and the textbook software allowed me to do. Uh, online interactions, we're going to do some right now. Uh, so having assignment or having activities in the class where students can actually interact, uh, choose the correct whatever. Uh, and finally, assessments, and I'm going to show you some of those. Uh, so I had students for an ELT class create on their midterm and their finals, uh, using Miro, they had to use they had to create graphic organizers uh, to basically take notes of very complex videos. All right, let's go into instructions. Follow me, everybody. Come back. Uh, so yeah, this I did two a year ago. It was a listening to final. So instead of I explained this to them, but uh, Basically, the instructions are just right here. So choose one of the videos. I'm a very visual person, and I've realized that most of my students actually work much better in a visual manner. Um, and so, yeah, they could choose one of these five videos. They could watch them right here. One of them was about the Mandalorian. To be fair, the initial investment in a virtual... This allows motion tracked cameras to execute traditional cinematography techniques. So they could choose one of these videos, watch the video, choose, take Cornell notes on two pieces of paper. Uh, this is how I wanted them to do that part. Uh, and that's one part of their assignment. The next part was uh, features of speech where I had them transcribe like a 20 to 30 second clip from the video, transcribe, word stress, word focus, focus words, sorry, thought group, intonation, color vowel. That was the assignment. Write it in a Google Docs. Uh, record the clip similar to the way it was spoken, and then submit everything on the 15th of June. So this was just another way, because my assessments, this was an ELT class, um, were very complicated. <laughs> and so this was just another tool after making a video, after having a class, um, students, became familiar with reading instructions. Uh, and one of the comments the students made in my class was that, oh, I always ask them, what advice would you give other students that are taking this class new? And every student said, read the instructions carefully. <laughs> they said, at first, you won't understand what's happening. But if you follow the instructions, it'll all make sense. And I was like, wow, critical thinking, nice. All right, uh, let's do something together right now. Uh, so this is, I think, from intermediate uh, vocabulary. So there's different categories, guys. Uh, fly over here with me if you can. Bring everyone to me. Uh, so you see energy, machines, medicine, science, IT, right? I want you to take these icons and put them in the correct place. So go. <laughs> machines, energy. Click, pick it up, there you go. Everybody else, join in, visitor, Mayaneer. We got electricity, of course. Oh, that's what's supposed to be in electricity, sorry. I'm gonna move that over electricity. That was supposed to be an example. You guys are fast, wow. These A-level students here just whizzing around, awesome. <laughs> so yeah, this is, and uh, 
if the students have the bandwidth, uh, if they're actually awake in the morning, it's just really fun to watch this process. Um, I feel like I'm a game show host, like, and there goes Etta, put in the commercial airplane into machines, I believe. Is it machines? I'm going to move it right there because I'm not sure what you're doing. Yes, Kudret, question. Okay. Okay, it's me again. Yes, <laughs> Lots hi. Of questions. It's fine. So, Bob, um, can we use these materials as the uh, materials we put it on uh, our drive as must materials? I mean, once we, uh, one of us, make it ready, uh, can we share it in our institution? Yeah, so, you, I mean, I would share it as a link. Like, you can you can paste a link into your computer so that somebody can double-click on that link. Um, it's a, The way I do it, it's a little weird. Okay, let me show you. Uh, so, yeah, you want to make sure you choose if it's view, edit, uh, and for this, it would be an edit uh, because you want students to interact and move things. I would copy this um, in my browser. I would paste it here. And usually, if you like drag the link from whatever, you could save it on your desktop. So I'm going to save it right there. And there's a link, an HTTP link. That's the, probably the best way. Sounds complicated, I know. But um, that's how I used to save links. <laughs> in Google Drive, you could save this HTML link. And then once somebody has that, they double click it. It's the same as uh, sharing links to, what's it called, to quizzes or to Kahoot's, right? Uh, I've seen materials department, great. Thank you, materials department, for a whole year of great work. Awesome. Uh, to everybody as well. Um, but yeah, you can share that link, and then once somebody double clicks on it. My only issue is you have to tell them to make a copy. Otherwise, you'll be working on the same device, uh, the same board each time. So, uh, one of the cool things I will show you right now, uh, you if you click on the name, you can duplicate, uh, and then once you do that, uh, it'll make a fresh copy. And uh, you know, as long as you lock the things, like I was showing before, so these are all locked um, using that little lock tool, and that's important. And depending on kind of the interactions you want, that's what you're going to do. All right, let's see if you guys are correct. Electricity, solar power, nuclear power, energy, boom. Let me give you that air horn. Uh, machines, vacuum cleaners, washing machines, commercial airplanes, motorbikes, boom. Awesome, magic wand you. Medicine, vaccinations, genetic, yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Okay, and the next part of this activity, take these icons and this is like taboo, all right? So you're gonna go, which one is energy lightning battery? Put that there, close detergent cleaning. Oof. So you're gonna take those icons from the left side right here, uh, and then you're gonna move them to where you think they go. So ML has put sun electricity panel with solar power. Ding, 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 ding. Dust, housewives, how, um, <laughs> how gender equality could you be with this? Hmm. Bob, can you show that how did you use these sound reactions? Oh, uh, it's, this is, I have like a board that I press. Oh, okay, so it's not on Miro. <laughs> no, it's not on Miro, sorry. I do this with my students all the time. If nobody's talking, this is what I do. Yeah, if if they fail, I never use this button, but a little nostalgia for. Um, do, do they know about Mario? I think so. Everybody knows about Mario. I think. At our age, yes. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. You're. Right. Oh, I locked this. I'm sorry. Let me undo that. And somebody is trying to put that there. All right, looks good. Awesome. Um, yeah. Kind of just like an activity, students get really into it. If students can't participate, they're still watching the process, which I think is part of learning. Um, and, and, you know, I think for me, it's part, active participation is important in my online classes, and students just haven't quite gotten that. So I think the more we do, the more everybody does, the, more, the better it would be. 
this is another one that I created a little bit more complex. Uh, this is about list of things that young and old people have to do. Uh, and so on the left side would be things that young people do, things that old people do. Sorry, I don't know. The book called it old people. I would like to use some other terms, but <laughs> just going with young and old. Uh, as you can see, some of the students uh, in this other class that I had, they wrote, young people have to give up their social life in order to get into university. Is that true? Uh, what was the funny one? Mustn't smoke. Oh, oh, I love this one. Old people don't have to respect young people. <laughs> uh, somebody else wrote, older people shouldn't have a bad impact on young people's lives with their bad decisions. Uh, you can go ahead and add something. Um, this is another way you can do interactions using post-it notes. Uh, let me close this so we can all see what's happening. It's a little huge. Um, but yeah, something I designed quickly. Didn't take too long. So come, move your things around. We got five people. Let's add something. The old people. Bergie says old people should learn how to. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not going to read it. Finish it. Anybody add anything new? And it's kind of like a gallery. You can create this kind of gallery feel. Um, and I think, you know, as students, they're, they like navigating around. So they can read things, they can move around. It kind of gives them freedom within a class. Imagine this as like a gallery space where you're doing a poster session um, and you can't see everything on, this, on view, but it allows students to kind of interact with their own environment. Old people can get married even when... Old people should learn how to surf on the internet. Yes, I agree. We're just talking about old people today. <clears throat> old people can get married when they are over 90. Yes, of course. Anybody can find love at any age, unless you're underage. Young people should not get married. Must not, mustn't. Mustn't? Shouldn't? Don't have to. Cannot. How about that? Young people what's the law here cannot get married under something what's the age here turkey 16 18 21 all things we have to figure out all right old people don't have to do sports <laughs> yes they do Yes, they do. They should. I think they should. I'm going to put a should in there. I'm going to press N. Click on my thing. Older people shouldn't overexercise. Should exercise, though. Never give up. All right, we got five minutes. I'm running out of time. Uh, that's another way we could do some interactions in our classrooms. And you can kind of assign this as a homework, which is what I ended up having to do. It's just say, hey, guys, go on, add something, add your name. I'll check for your names. Um, you know, just like a Padlet can kind of exist inside the class and it can exist outside the class. Think of this as kind of like a, a Padlet on steroids. Um, bring in every... Whoops. Are we here already? Oh. Sorry, come with me first. Come with me. Uh, so yeah, let me share with you one of the assessments that I had my students do a long time ago. Uh, and this was for their midterm. This is not preparatory school. Um, but basically, the student watched a video. I'm going to share it in the links, all the links, all the things. A lot of teacher self-talk today. Um, but if you look at this, uh, the student watched this video from Vox, Why People Think They See Ghosts. 
Uh, and instead of taking notes in the traditional Cornell or outlining method, I had students make graphic organizers of the information. Uh, so linking ideas, using only keywords, uh, short phrases, no long sentences. Um, and yeah, it became something as a visual aid while you're watching this. And there was a lot of good examples of this. It took, I don't know, a semester and a half to get to this point. Uh, so you kind of had to believe in a process like this. If you've never done this before, it's going to be difficult. If your students have never seen anything like this before, well, it's going to be even more difficult. All right. That's an assessment. You can create something where students create something using Miro based on something. So uh, talking about environmental problems. Uh, maybe having students collaborate groups of four outside of class, uh, coming together, adding their bits and pieces together for a Miro that talks about that, uh, the gender violence things. Uh, students could add in images, um, have explanations, add YouTube videos uh, that discuss a different topic. So it's kind of like a collage, a digital collage, collage sorry, of information. All right, we have two minutes. Uh, so we're not going to do this activity in the same way. It disappeared. You guys destroyed my thing. Oops. Let's open this one. <laughs> oh, because I didn't lock it. I get it. All right. No, we're not going to do this. Um, but if you guys want to just write in, we're going to do this group activity. I, I don't think there's enough people. Um, but I was going to use the breakout rooms and have people in groups work on different these little team boxes uh, where they were going to talk about the pros and cons of Miro for teachers and students. Uh, let's open it up after I finish this. So not that, not that. Let's get to the conclusion. Uh, and if you have not so let's combine this. So if you have any questions, you can grab one of these. Uh, you can type out a question. Uh, if there's something that you think is a pro about Miro, Let's do that. Ah, sorry, guys. Any pros, any cons? I'm going to make a little box here. Quickly. I'm going to label this side pro. Too big. I'm going to label this side. Cons. So think about any pros and cons that you might have when you're thinking about this the first time you're seeing this or whatever. Grab a little thing. You can make it smaller. I'm going to make this bigger. Sorry. Let me move that guy out of the way. Any pros for students? So start with teachers, students. Um, You can write your name. Blah, blah, blah. Oops, it's not gonna. There we go. So pro cons for teachers, for students. What do you think? I think the biggest con is bandwidth, uh, and it doesn't have to be. I mean, if you're only just loading a few images, it's fine. Uh, I think it's just the moment that you do this activity in the beginning, where you have students add photos. It might take a long time to upload this. Seems like a fun way to teach and learn. I think there is a learning curve, especially with activities, but I think for me, Miro started off as just my, we call it the digital brain, the second brain, uh, the way that you store information. You, sometimes in the past, it used to be a Rolodex with people's phone numbers or cards, recipe things. That's an idea of what a second brain is. Um, I think for me, though, just being a visual person, uh, this has kind of been my way of organizing my thoughts, my ideas for classes, uh, not just current classes, future stuff, just to make sense of the world. Sometimes I just use this to find ideas about why people are acting crazy. <laughs> There's three theories I have. It may take some time, yes, of course. 
And part of that taking the time, my advice if you want to use something like this is to just continue to practice, um, not in the classroom, but just for your own personal, you know, own personal reasons. Uh, whether you're into music and you're just saving YouTube videos, um, you know, or whether you are just a student doing your PhD, uh, collecting information, uh, and then being able to visually link these using the lines, things like that, right? I think the thing for me, let's see, facilitates facilitation. Yeah, it looks amazing. It's a diverse chance to participate autonomously. Yes. And that's, I think, really important in the online class is that we kind of, I mean, I, I, from my informal research, introverts do much better in online classes uh, when you give them these kind of tools. Uh, give them the ability to write their thoughts before they have to speak. Uh, you know, write first, talk later. Let's slow everything down. Um, but always give students a way to kind of start to collect their ideas and use the language to make mistakes. This is kind of why I like Padlet. Um, but the thing about Padlet is you don't see them writing. There's something beautiful about watching the writing process happening at the same time. It can be intimidating at first until you learn how to use it. Yep. You're all right there. Sorry for all the blinking. Oof. Can I get a seizure? All right. It's 12.03. I am over time. Um, but yeah, you can see that if you can train your students, if you can train yourself, train your students, uh, you can have kind of a discussion board that looks like this. Uh, and something organic. I mean, I just threw together. You can just throw together two shapes or two circles, do a Venn diagram, uh, lock those in place and have students start writing uh, anywhere with text boxes. They could, you could have them add icons to represent some things, uh, you know, I don't know. There's like tons of, you know, thumbs up or something. Uh, if they agree, there's like a voting thing that I've never used before. You can vote using something, something. I've never used it. Someday, somebody tell me how to do it. All right, so let's look. Bandwidth for students to make, oh, sorry, let's go with the pros. Uh, seems like a fun way to teach and learn. I think so. Uh, and our students have to get better at these things. And some of them are really good. And they can do this on their smartphones. I've seen it. Um, give introvert students the chance to participate autonomously. Yes, I totally agree. Facilitates interactions. Just having a tool to interact, right? Having a whiteboard while you're teaching and not just having no, nothing on your screen looks amazing. I totally agree. I love seeing that. It's hypnotic, seeing everybody flying around. They do such a good job with that. Helps with collaboration, cooperative, high participation. Yes. Uh, but yeah, for me, bandwidth issues, uh, devices could be difficult to manage, crowded classrooms, kind of chaotic sometimes. And I think that's the point. Uh, I think if you do activities like this, it's think of it as one of those screaming activities where students are running around. Give control, let go of control in those processes uh, if you're doing an activity like that. Uh, but eventually you, you rein them in, you know. <laughs> and you can press that button, uh, bring everyone to me, and it'll rein them all in. At first, it may take a long time to prepare. Yes, of course. Uh, it may take some time to get familiar. It can be intimidating. So those are those things. And I would say, like any tool, uh, it, it takes practice, and it takes practice working on it on your own. So use those ideas from use cases for teachers, like outside the classroom, ways that you organize your thoughts, um, and even just ways that you can share these informations with a group, with your students, with other teachers, uh, with your family. I don't know. Use this, like, all over the place. All right. I went five minutes over. That's fine. Uh, the last thing, uh, you don't have to do this right now, but uh, if you click on this link, this is really cool. I didn't know that they did this. Uh, you can fill out the uh, Google Forms right here in this. You can, and then you can press Submit. So uh, if you, you can add your name, it's optional, uh, but just tell me how this training was. What did you learn about Miro? So recall uh, what would you like to learn more about in the future, and how could this presentation be improved? I'm asking for feedback. I always love getting feedback. Uh, and if you would like more trainings like this in the future, 
uh, please provide your email address because I'll be doing a lot more teacher trainings in the next few years, uh, creating kind of a platform for teachers. Uh, yeah, thank you. I just want to say thank you for everybody who has attended, uh, anybody who is watching from home, uh, and anybody who watches this video after the fact. Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, continually, professionally developing yourself. Um, and yeah, I guess the last thing I would have to say is uh, I won't, some of you might know, but I won't be coming back next year to uh, Izmir Democracy University. I'll be uh, assigned to Ege University. Uh, where I'll also be doing teacher trainings, um, and so we'll still all be in touch. Uh, so you can reach out if you have any questions about any of these tools. I am available at some point, um, and I would love to kind of get a group of teachers together to kind of go further with these ideas um, in training. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for the informative and uh, great and fun workshop, actually. Awesome. Uh, I hope that everyone, I, I believe that uh, all of us will try and uh, try to learn more about it. I, I found it really useful and I have no doubt that my uh, colleagues also think the same way. Yeah. And awesome. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It starts <laughs> with you guys. So, you know, just share some Miro docs with, uh, <laughs> share yeah. some Miro links uh, to your, uh, you know, to everybody. And then they'll start thank to you. see it more. All right. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Have Thank a great you. rest of your day. Good luck with finals. Good you luck too. with everything. Have a great summer. And I will see you hopefully very soon. Or drinks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. -bye. Bye.